I was working in this little grocery store in Indianapolis for a guy named Ryan. He was a Jew. And he pretty well gave me the run of the store. I, had to, I ran the cash register. I did the, the delivery. I did the stocking. And uh, we sold, uh, mostly it was a black neighborhood. But uh, one day uh, this uh, family moved across the street from the church, uh, from the church from the store. And uh, her dad, John, started coming in. And John, of course, would nip the bottle a little bit. And we had beer and wine in the store. And he would buy it and talk to me. And I talked to him. Spent a lot of time there. And then he says, I got a, I got a daughter over next door. So two, two of my daughters are married. I got one's not married. And he was joking me about how he's going to marry her off. And uh, so anyway, two or three days later, well, I asked him, I said, well, who is she? And he showed me, he said, that's my daughter, Laura. she's sitting on the porch. I said, well, maybe I could take her out somehow. He said, well, ask her. So anyway, one day she come running in the store and she said, I said to her, hey, I said, how about that's going, I don't remember where now, we're going to go somewhere. And uh, she said, well, you'll have to ask me. You'll have to ask my dad. I said, I've already asked him. He said, it's okay. And you ought to see the look on her face. That time I had a driver's license. I was 17 years old. And uh, we went to see the lady in the tramp. And uh, I drove it out on Shadeland Avenue in Indianapolis in the drive-in theater there. So we went there. That was the start, you know, until she ditched me one time. I, I don't know, yeah, I had to go to Japan. I went and joined the Air Force, went to Japan. And then she chased me all the way to Japan, buddy. I got this letter one day in the mail. I, I didn't and ditch him. I just was being friendly with the guy that I'd known most of my life. And I didn't know he was watching me. I wasn't watching you. I went by the one night to see you, and he told me you weren't there. And he told me that uh, he was your date. Um, That's what he told me. He said, oh, she's, I don't know who the guy was. And I said, well, hey, if she wants to date you, let her date you. I, I can find somebody else. So I left. But in Japan, she called me. And I wrote her a letter back. And the next thing I knew, we was writing letters. And the next thing I knew, I was coming home from the Air Force. And when I got to my house, she was waiting on me. Well, and that was, uh, then a lot of things happened. That's it. Well, to start with, me and Stella, his sister, was good friends and that's how I met him uh, and she was the one taught me and went out with him and then uh, when he was overseas uh, I, was, I ran around with Stella all the time and then she came home he came home and, and we got married <laughs> I met you long before you ever met Stella no yeah I did okay I took you to the house and you met Stella she probably jumped on the bandwagon. Stella did probably, knowing her. Uh, well, we were at a drive-in theater, and he's we sitting there. And, mm, we, the movie was kind of, and after a while, he said, "When are you gonna marry me?" And we'd been dating for about him year more, well more than that. And I said, whenever you get enough nerve to ask me, I guess. And I didn't say anything. He didn't say anything? You said, really? And I said, yeah. And he didn't say anything. And I said, well, was that a proposal? If it is, and that's all I'm gonna get, I'll say yes. And the rest is history. Well, tell us about the wedding. When he, did you get married? He, he was real bashful. He was real shy. And um, so I, I kept saying, he won't have a, he won't go for a church wedding. I wanted one. So uh, he did, and everything went real good, the wedding. And then he was in the Air Force. And uh, after that, we went to 
uh, back to the Army base. We lived in Air Force base, Air Force base in, in Michigan. And uh, we had a lot of fun there and a lot of good friends. And uh, he was there until he, uh, his time was up. And then we went back to Indianapolis. And uh, I, that, that was the only time I didn't work. And I hadn't worked in a long time, so I was getting nervous. So we went back to Indianapolis and I, I got a job. I went back to the phone company. I'd worked there all those years. And uh, then Becky came along. And then you? No, no, Greg. Uh, Greg. We try to forget about him. Yeah, and then you were the. You, he wasn't He's, born until we got to Chattanooga once no. in Tessie Temple. Oh, yeah, uh, and, and, he and was born to that old hillbilly place. <laughs> yeah, you used to fuss about that because anyway, uh, we we went to Tennessee Temple. You were about. Um, Three years old, two or three years old, and you were the. I got. The, I was that born. Wait a minute. You, you were born down there, weren't you? Yeah, that's right. See, he was born. To, and he was the church baby, and there was it was a big church, and he was passed around all the time. And if I didn't want him, if I wanted a break, all I had to do was let somebody take him home, because <laughs> somebody was always wanting to take him home, and uh, he enjoyed the attention he was getting. I'm not sure the other two enjoyed his attention though. Well, well Greg, Greg never wanted Which attention, but Becky did. So, uh, that, that was about, that was the beginning. He took over. Can I talk about Greg? Putting the button up his nose in Chattanooga? Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can I talk about Greg? Almost cutting his finger off with a little wagon I bought him. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't talk about Greg. Wait till Mike leaves, we'll talk about Mike. Okay. Well, the Lord called me to preach. And uh, in 1965, June of that year, or July 1. We loaded up a Volkswagen, everything we owned on it. Two kids, we looked like the Beverly Hillbillies. Everything we, had, we owned. And $450 in my pocket from the stuff that we had sold, furniture and things like that. And we headed for Chattanooga, Tennessee. We didn't know where we were going to stay. We didn't know what we were going to do. What we were going to do. So I got to Chattanooga. First night we stayed in the motel. Next night, the next day at school, I met this fellow who was from our, out of our church in Indianapolis, and he let us move in with him for about uh, three weeks till we found a, uh, a place to move. We rented a house trailer and uh, was, had two bedrooms. Had no man owned it. Nobody could ever understand what he said because everything he said sounded like three bags. Yes, sir. He said, sound like, yes, sir, three bags full. But you kids yeah. enjoyed talking to him. Yeah. Well, Becky especially, and in that trailer park, Becky found a snake, and really heard her say, rock a -bye, baby and run her, Becky had that snake for the tail, going, rock a -bye, baby Only she was uh, out in tune. Yeah, uh, huh? I said, only she was in tune. You keep quiet. Well, you can have black that other eye, you mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway uh, I found a job at Buster Brown. And worked there for about a year, and then uh, the school. I had some electric electric training from uh, Indianapolis when I worked for my class in Indianapolis, and so uh, the school asked me to come work for them. They get, and I went to work for the school for the next three years. I worked for the school, and during that time, which was four years, we were there. Uh, we pastored a church up in Palmer, Tennessee. We done the no coal mining town. We had a church that people would come to, and uh, on one side they, they called them the scabs, and the other side the union people said. And the twain had not met in years. And the coal mine strike had been going on for years. And then we were pastored the Rock of Ages Baptist Church up in uh, South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. 
And then we pastor, we worked with Cecil Bateman at the church in, uh, up on W Road. And a lot of exciting things happened there because he had two daughters that were mean snakes and I had a daughter that was mean snake. So Mike had a great big crush on the oldest daughter. Yeah, Jeannie, he had a great crush on Jeannie. Anyway, she was uh, 18 and he was one. <laughs> I finally graduated, and shortly after we graduated, we moved back to Indianapolis for nine, and spent a period of nine months in Indianapolis before the Lord gave me a church. <laughs> Well, I was at Thompson Road working with Brother Julian for about nine months after graduating. And uh, I was candidating to a few different churches and none of them seemed to want me. And I really didn't want them either, so uh, it was kind of a mutual thing. And so I re we received this letter, Brother Julian did, from a group up in Illinois and a new missionary, James, Bill James who was in Japan, he recommended me to them, and they were, were a group of people who started a church. About 20, 25 of them, we got together, three or four families who started a church. And they asked me to come. <clears throat> well, they sent me an invitation, and it was too close to Chicago for me, because I told the Lord I, we'd go anywhere from Chicago. I wasn't going to Chicago. But anyway, Brother Julian had me in his office, and Jack Hudson, was there holding a revival meeting. And Brother Julian said, fill an application out and send it back to them. And it hurt nothing. He said, and if they can let you have you to come up and you and your wife can go make it a vacation. I said, okay. And I said, I don't want to fill that question out. I don't know how to fill that question out. Jack Hudson said, I will. I'll fill it out for you. And so one of the questions they had on there, really, this is true, one of the questions they had on the questionnaire is what does your wife wear to bed? Now that was on the questionnaire. Jack Hudson, here's his answer. He says nothing if I can talk her into it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he answered all kinds of silly answers. You know, to what this, does your wife look like and said the movie star? Yeah, and uh, to this day, nobody has ever asked me about that questionnaire. Nobody, I don't know whatever happened to it. I don't know if anybody read it, never got he, back to he it. He never did any of it, Brother Julian and... and uh, yeah, Brother Julian and Jack Hudson did Jack it. Jack Hudson did it, the whole thing. So family. anyway, I went up there, we were going to take a vacation. We got to, we got some people to keep the kids and uh, you three children. And then we went, so we went up there, and supposed to just to make it a vacation, go up there and, and have a place to preach and so forth. Robbie kept the kids. But anyway, as soon as I got to... Uh, uh, Phillips Park on a hill out above Aurora, you know where Phillips Park is. I stopped there to make a telephone call to call the, the fellow who, uh, back in those days, we didn't have cell phones, so I had to call and stop at a telephone booth. And I was going to call the fellow, I was calling the fellow that, uh, whose ad, phone number and address I had, who was Jim Johnson. And, uh, <clears throat> but as I'm making that phone call, it just came to me. This is where you're going to be. I mean, God just told me, said, this is it. Here you are. And I knew as sure as I'm standing there that that, that was the place that the Lord wanted me. So anybody I preached Sunday morning and Sunday night for the people, stayed with Jim Johnson. And preached Sunday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night, taught Sunday school class and answered all their questions and everything. And they had a lot of silly questions. Uh, one of the questions the guy asked me was, well, what would it take talk about salary. He said, what would it take to, uh, for you to be able to get by And I, he was a truck driver. And I said, Sonny Matt Manica was his name. And I said to Sonny, I said, listen, would you work where you work at for what you get by on? He said, kind of stupid question. And I said, you know, that's kind of it. That way. But anyway, I told him I would not discuss salary with them until they called me. After they had voted on me and called me, then we talked about salary. And uh, when we left that night, going back to Indianapolis, because I had work Monday, uh, Rella says, you reckon they'll call us? And I told her on the way back, I said, if they don't call us, they are out of the will of God.
this is where God wants me. And they called me. They called me. We discussed salary when I went to, at, back, and uh, they gave me uh, $150. Was it $150 or $150 a week, which was very good money back then. You know, it surprised me they gave me that much money. And uh, they bought a house in Boulder Hill, moved us in. And uh, like in two or three weeks, I was there, you know, after I had preached for them. And so, of course, we had the first battle on the first Sunday we preached over mixed bathing and things of that nature. But God blessed us, and we stayed there for 32 years.